So in this video we're going to continue our discussion about collisions. All collisions, all collisions conserve linear momentum. So you have as many equations as you have dimensions. If it's a one-dimensional collision between two pull balls, you have one equation. The momentum in the x-direction before the collision has to equal the total momentum in the x-direction after. If you have a two-dimensional collision where pull balls come in and maybe strike, this pull ball comes in like this, and it strikes, say, another pull ball here, this pull ball goes off here with some V2 final at some angle here of theta. And the other pull ball goes off this away with some V1 final at some angle of phi. There's M1, there's M2, and we would of course need an axis, X, Y. We know that the initially there was no linear momentum in the y and there was whatever this is call it v1 initial in the x so in the x direction I have m1 v1 initially and in the y direction when I started ahead zero after the collision I have this mass m1 v1 f but I'm looking for the x part, that's this side, that would be the cosine of phi. And then I have this particle, m2v2f, and I'm looking at this side, so that would be the cosine of theta. That would give me one equation. Now I'd have to know some of these things in order to solve that equation, but that would tell me that all the x parts of the arrows before and after had to add up. Likewise the y. Well there is no y on the way in. This pull ball was going along x. So the initial y momentum is zero. Afterwards this arrow has an up place so that's m1 v1 f sine of phi to find the opposite side. And on this arrow the opposite side also has a sign m2 v2 f sine theta but it's in the negative y direction so it gets a minus sign. Two equations? I could solve for two unknowns. All collisions conserve linear momentums. All of them you can write their individual p's and the x parts, y parts and so forth. Now we split collections into two parts. We know they all conserve P. Do they all conserve mechanical energy? Now, because the collision occurs so fast, the particles have no time to move while the collision is going on. So they have no change in their position, so their potential energy can't change. But their kinetic energy might. So we split collisions. based upon whether uh, I don't like that uh, based upon the collision conserving kinetic energy. So there are two types. Those that do conserve it and those that do not conserve it. One collisions are called elastic collisions. energy conserved. 
So if you can use conservation of energy as well, that is the material in chapter 6 to solve problems because the work by non-conservative forces was zero, then that type of collision is called an elastic collision. Most collisions in the real world are not elastic. For instance, two cars crash. I know it's not elastic because I hear energy in the form of sound coming to my ears. Likewise, when pull balls hit, I hear the sound. So they're not elastic. However, the amount of energy in a pull ball collision is very small compared to the total energy. So it's almost elastic. Whereas in a car crash, most of the energy is actually lost. The cars are running before and they have energy kinetic and after they collide they come to a stop and they have no energy of motion. So in them they are definitely not elastic collisions. In general in the homework problems itself you must be told that a collision is elastic. If you are not told that it is elastic you may not assume it and you may not use conservation of energy. Now the second type of collisions are called in elastic collisions as in not elastic collisions. This means no energy conservation. So the N in inelastic says, no, you can't use energy conservation. You can use momentum conservation for both, but only this one up here can use energy conservation. Now a very special type of inelastic collision is when two objects stick together. If two objects stick together, you know for sure that they are inelastic. But if they don't stick together, they could be inelastic or they might be elastic. You don't know. If you don't know, you just have to assume you can't use energy conservation for those collisions. Now, in the next video, I will go ahead and I will work a particular problem in which I apply these sort of concepts, momentum and so forth, to various types of collisions. So, that finishes all the theory. I'll see you in the next video to solve problems.